Let's say that I'm interested in detecting references to the Python programming language, and that I have this text. Now in this case, I wouldn't just be interested in detecting this string Python. I would also be interested in grabbing the version number that's attached with it. Now there are a few methods that you could use to solve this, but this is a excellent use case for token-based matching inside of Spacey, which is a technique that's kind of like a regex, but it also allows you to pattern match across a sequence of tokens uh, by using the attributes that Spacey is able to parse for you. You can learn a lot more about this if you go to the usage section of the Spacey documentation, then to the rule-based matching part, and then to this token matcher over here. Because here you're going to see all the different attributes that Spacey is able to give you that you can use in a pattern matcher inside of Spacey. And there are lots of properties to pick from. Uh, you can use the length of the text. Uh, you can have some properties that concern themselves with uh, lowercase, uppercase, or title case text. Uh, but there are also more linguistic features like part of speech and the grammatical dependency that you can also go ahead and use. Now in this video we're going to keep our patterns relatively simple, but it's good to know that these features are at your disposal. So let's define some patterns uh, for this use case. All right, and there we go. I, uh, I have three patterns defined over here. And a pattern is basically a list of dictionaries. And these dictionaries follow a format. Each dictionary describes a attribute or a collection of attributes, followed by the pattern or the value that you're interested in. And the thing that's really good to point out at this point is that these attributes are actual attributes that are attached to the token, which is why it's always good to refer to the documentation when you're building these patterns. Now to make it more tangible, I'll just explain what each of these patterns do. So we can have a look at this first pattern over here. This just describes that there is a token for which the lowercase text is Python, and that's it. So this pattern definition over here is going to match this Python string, this Python string, and this one. The next pattern is somewhat different. I'm still matching for lowercase text, but I'm not matching against the string anymore. I'm now matching against the regex for that one token. And effectively what I'm saying here is that if I ever have a token like Python 2, for example, where the 2 is actually still attached to the token, that I still want to be able to match on that. And the regex pattern that I have over here would also allow for Python versions like this. But the crucial part here is that this still defines a pattern over a single token. And that's different in this final pattern over here. You'll notice that here I've got two dictionaries and each of these two dictionaries is referring to another token. So here I'm saying there are two tokens that follow each other, and the first token needs to match lowercase python, and the second token needs to match this regex, uh, and this regex, again, can match for numbers or any of these number sequences that follow semantic versioning. So those are some patterns that I've defined over here. And what I can now go ahead and do is I can give these patterns to a spacey matcher. And that's what I'm doing in this cell over here. Now the first thing that I'm doing is I'm starting my NLP object over here by using a blank English model. Next, I am passing my text through such that I have a document here which comes with all the tokens that I'm going to be using. And then next, I am initializing a matcher object over here. That matcher object will need a reference to the NLP variable because it needs the vocabulary. But once that's given, I now have a matcher that I can attach patterns onto. And that's what I'm doing in this final line over here. Now, the way that that works is you give your patterns a name. Uh, in this case, I'm saying this is for programming languages. And then you pass in the patterns like so. And this gives me a matcher that I can apply to this document. And here's what that looks like. Uh, you'll notice that I'm passing in the document here to this matcher and that I'm then looping over it. Whenever you iterate over the matcher, you are going to get a match ID as well as the start and the end uh, of the matched pattern. And that is useful information because it allows me to fetch the span of the document where the match is taking place. Whenever there's a match, it starts and it ends somewhere and I can use that information to uh, get the substring of interest. 
And this match ID is also very useful because it allows us to refer to the name of the matched pattern. You'll notice that I'm passing the ID in over here and that I get a string out. And you can also see that I have a match ID printed here and that that corresponds to the programming language name that we provided earlier. Uh, in this case, we're just dealing with one name of one kind of pattern that we're interested in. So in this case, it might feel a bit strange that we're taking all of this effort. Uh, but in general, you might have different patterns with different names that you've attached. And in that case, it's actually quite useful to uh, be able to make that distinction with this match ID. But uh, let's now have a look at all of these patterns and let's see if we can uh, place them in the document that we have. So the first thing that it matched over here, which I'm going to call A, that starts at index four and ends immediately after. So that's referring to the Python string over here. The next item that we match is Python 3.6.10, which I'm going to call B. And that's referring to this segment over here. After that, we're matching Python again, which is in this case referring to this one. 2.7 is matching onto this one. And we have a similar thing happening at the end over here. So we can confirm that indeed we are matching terms in our document, and that's great. But at this point, you might also worry that maybe you're not so much interested in all the different matches. Uh, maybe you are more interested in detecting these items as entities. And in that case, you would be more interested in capturing this as an entity, capturing this as an entity, and capturing this as an entity. So to facilitate that, we can use a different component from Spacey. Uh, we can use a entity ruler. And here's how you can set that up. Once again, I am loading up a blank Spacey model over here. And immediately after, I am adding a pipeline component, namely a entity underscore ruler. This gives me a ruler variable that I can add patterns to, similar to before, but the patterns that I'm passing in here are just a little bit different. They are very similar, but the main thing that I got to do is I got to make sure that each dictionary that I have in my list over here comes with a label to attach. And that is because an entity needs to have a name. Now the patterns themselves that I have, they are the same as what I had before. And for every dictionary that I have here, I am passing a separate pattern. Again, every dictionary in this list here represents a separate token, but given this list of dictionaries, I'm now able to add all of these patterns to my entity ruler over here. And when I run this and then pass in some text to this NLP object, then I do get a document that has entities attached. And you can see indeed that there is a correspondence between what these entities are detecting and what we were interested in detecting in the first place. So that's great. And in fact, uh, because we are now dealing with a document that has entities attached, uh, we can also use the Displacey tool to uh, visualize the entities. And from here, it's also uh, just a bit more clear uh, that we are indeed dealing with a programming language and that's not actually been attached as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now to wrap up, I do want to mention two details about this. Uh, the first detail that I do want to mention, if you are considering doing this yourself, uh, patterns are very powerful, but some of the patterns that you might be using require linguistic features like uh, parts of speech. And the parts of speech tags inside a Spacey come from a statistical model, which means that you are going to get mistakes now and again, and that you're also going to want to have a model that comes with parts of speech. Um, a blank Spacey model doesn't have that. Then a final detail that is also good to mention is that you'll notice that before the matcher would pick up both Python as well as Python 2.7. While if you look at the named entities over here, it definitely seems to be ignoring one of the possible matches. Now inside of Spacey, named entities are not allowed to overlap. So what the entity ruler is doing here is it's basically doing a greedy approach where it just favors the longest pattern. That is to say, the pattern with the most tokens. So anything that matches that's a subset of a longer pattern will be discarded in favor for the longer variant.